This explainer video is to help guide environment agency staff, our suppliers and contractors so we can protect people from flooding while also meeting our ambitions to reach net zero carbon. In July 2020, the organisation launched EA 2025, a five-year action plan setting out our long-term goals and putting the climate crisis at the centre of everything we do. Within the plan, aligning with our E-Mission 2030 strategy, we have committed to becoming net zero carbon by 2030. At the Environment Agency, data on our carbon emission is used to inform a number of crucial business decisions. Within our goal to be net zero carbon by 2030, the carbon data we collect is vital in measuring our progress towards achieving this. Carbon data is used to calculate our total carbon emissions from across the Environment Agency. Calculate performance against emissions targets. Identify carbon hotspots. Understand and implement best practice. And improve our forecasting capabilities. Emissions from our Capital Works projects accounts for around 54% of our total annual emissions. All EA projects will have to produce carbon estimates for all options at Gateways 1, 2 and 3 in their submitted business cases from July 2021 onwards. We forecast our expected carbon emissions through our ERIC and COST carbon tool for our construction works and collect the actual carbon usage data as work progresses through the project lifecycle. The data must be collected from our EA staff, consultants and contractors. We utilise both our forecasted and actual carbon data within our reporting. The data from our construction activities are collected using ERIC Carbon Planning Tool and the new Cost and Carbon Tool. It is critical to have good data to enable smart decisions during the project lifecycle. Going forward, we will collect carbon data for the operation and maintenance of environment agency assets using AIMS Operation and Maintenance. The capital programme will be set a provisional decarbonisation glide path to a minimum 45% reduction in emissions by 2030 compared to a 2019 baseline. Individual projects will be set carbon budgets in line with this glide path to ensure we remain on track to meet this goal. Our actual emissions are compared against our forecasted emissions to monitor our progress and our glide path to our 2030 goal. All EA projects will have an updated carbon reduction target set that is specific to the assets being planned and their achievable levels of decarbonisation. These targets will be aligned to the Capital Programme's decarbonisation glide path. We will be introducing these as provisional targets in autumn 2021, following which they will become approved at their next gateway as part of the business case. When we collect our actual emissions data for a capital project, we compare this data against our emissions forecast. This helps us to identify best practices and assess where our carbon hotspots are and residual emissions remain. The existing ERIC carbon planning tool and the new cost and carbon tool make it easy to identify individual elements within an asset and the actual carbon emissions associated with them. These powerful tools provide us with a means of reducing carbon early in the design process. Our forecasted and actual emissions data are there to inform our future decision-making against our net zero carbon by 2030 target. By 2050, we aim to reach absolute zero carbon emissions. Forecasts of our expected emissions are vital to create the glide path to net zero and absolute zero. They are also vital to understanding the challenges we face in achieving these goals. Where the project has had significant design work, then the cost and carbon tool allows for good forecasting. However, we need to provide forecasts for projects at an earlier stage. 
To do this, we have developed an intensity metric based on construction cost. A carbon intensity metric gives a measure of the CO2 emitted based on the cost of a project. This is given as tonnes of CO2 emissions over £10,000 construction cost, which is based on completed projects where we have actual CO2 emissions rates against cost from construction over a number of years. Using an intensity metric allows us to create a carbon budget based on cost of the programme, in addition to all areas and projects being assigned a provisional carbon budget as part of our net zero carbon pilot project. By 2021, a shadow programme will be produced to re-rank projects in the programme by both funding and carbon allocations. The re-ranking will be carried out using an updated PF score, which will have been recalculated to include carbon costs and carbon avoided, which are converted to pounds using BEIS carbon prices. In order to form the shadow programme with the most accurate data, from summer 2021, all projects will be required to include carbon prices and avoided carbon within their economic appraisals from their next gateway stage. In future years, we intend to adopt an annual refresh exercise that will operate with an approved process for carbon budget optimization and allocation in the programme. Projects and areas will work with the refresh process to set both funding and carbon allocations for RFCC approval. Using these metrics and carbon data as a whole is vital in ensuring we meet our total of being net zero carbon by 2030 and in understanding the challenges ahead in meeting these goals. You can contribute to achieving our net zero carbon target by following the carbon reduction hierarchy from the early stage of a project and ensuring a carbon assessment is completed for all options at SOC, OBC and FBC. Thank you.